Hey there guys, Dr. Dave here with another Mindstorms EV3 video tutorial. In today's tut tutorial we're going to look at using the gyro sensor to enable us to drive forward in a straight line. To begin with, we're just going to use the sensor in a passive manner to enable us to monitor what direction we're travelling in. So the first thing we do here is reset the gyro sensor or zero it, so that, in that way the, the angle becomes zero. Next thing we do is put in a one second pause just to enable that zeroing to take effect. And then in this block, we're going to drive the robot forward uh, 15 revolutions, so it's roughly two and a half meters or so. Down here in a separate block, what we've got happening inside this loop is we're doing a display of the uh, gyro readings. So we're continually updating the display here first thing we do is read the gyro setting, display it to a display block and then put a brief uh, 0.1 of a second delay in. The following demos show the robot drawing forward without any assistance from the gyros. In both cases the robot is very clearly veering off to the left. Uh, in fact it's veering off up to as much as 15-20 centimetres over the length of 2 or 3 metres which is clearly going to lead to, to big problems in terms of accuracy. So what we're going to do in this code is look at how we can use the gyro in order to enable the robot to drive in a much straighter line. So let's go through it now. The first thing we're going to do is set a couple of variables. We'll set the power. In this case we're just going to use a 60% power and we'll set a variable called gain which we'll explain in a moment. But Okay, this one here, what we're doing is we're resetting the, the motor rotation, so we're, again we're zeroing that sensor, and we're going to use the sensor in the motor B to keep track of how far we've driven. And hopefully if we keep it on mostly a straight line, um, it won't really matter which, which of the two motors we keep track of. Here again we zero the gyro sensor, and we put again a one second pause in to make sure that, that zeroing takes effect. Down here, exactly the same block as what we had previously in terms of displaying or updating the, the direction display. So we won't go in and explain that one further. So we'll go up here and explain this block, which we've got a loop, which is going to continue until we've traveled 15 rotations of uh, motor or the wheel that's connected to motor B. Um, as I said, if we keep this in a relatively straight line, hopefully both motors will travel approximately the same distance, or both wheels. All right, so what we're doing here, first up is we're reading the value from the gyro sensor. Uh, we're feeding that into our arithmetic block here, and we're basically checking the error, so how much it differs from zero. So remember, if we want to drive the robot head in a straight line, it should maintain a zero bearing. Okay, once we've done that calculation, we're going to feed the, the value that we compute into the error variable. So that basically represents how far off from the zero value we are. And that will then be used to determine how much correction we need to do. Okay, this is where the correction happens up here in this second arithmetic block. We've used, so we use the advanced block here. We've got three inputs to the block and one output. So the inputs are the power which has a default of 60, uh, the error that we calculated earlier, and the gain, which is a multiplier to see how much impact this error rating has. And what we've done here is we multiply the error, which is stored in variable A, by the gain, which is at this stage 0.7 or 70%, and we add that to the power rating. And then we feed this value into our motor B setting, motor B port. Motor, uh, sorry, motor C, I should say, motor C port. Uh, the default power of 60, 60% is fed into motor B. And we drive the, mo drive the tank or drive the robot ahead at that power. And by factoring this error rating, we've got a correction for any, any veering that, we, that is occurring. We continue this loop until we've travelled 15 rotations for the wheel that's connected to motor B. And then finally, at the end of this loop, 
And then finally, at the end of this loop, we call a, a motor stop or tank stop block to basically cease the movement. Again, down here, we've got an indefinite loop. So this program will actually continue indefinitely. So we need to use one of our brick buttons to stop the, stop the code running. We now look at a demo of the, of the code running. As we can see, in this case, the robot is traveling in a far straighter line, barely veering off the pathway of the uh, floorboards there. And indeed, to, just to prove that it wasn't just a fluke for the first time, we can see it again, pretty well traveling in a straight line. The main issues that we face are the acceleration at the beginning and the braking at the end can cause a little bit of juddering or veering uh, that could easily be fixed with some acceleration or deceleration.